Researchers showed that charged particles can travel for immense distances through space along a twisted rope not made of dense matter at all. The rope is made entirely of the charged particles themselves and the magnetic fields generated by those streams of current. Scientists call these ropes filaments. Sometimes they consist of bundles of filaments, and sometimes of only two, which are literally a double helix. Filaments are fundamental to the universe and to all entities. They carry current, and they can carry information in the form of signals they can transport energy, and so forth. In the universe as a whole, they are everywhere. They constitute the major portion of the universe. Some scientists call them Birkeland currents, which contain current-carrying double helixes spiraling forward and surrounded by protective sheaths. Similar patterns and structures occur at different scales. That's why Birkeland currents can also be microscopic. Our bodies are full of them. It is because of the nature of such infinitesimally small currents that we are alive. There is a distinct similarity between the structure of the DNA molecule and a Birkeland current, same as in space filaments. Cell biologists insist that charged currents flow along the DNA molecules inside our bodies and that they are superconducting. It was suggested originally by Hannes Alfein that by this means, gigantic Birkeland currents streaming through space from stars and continue to pump them full of electrons. According to this theory, our Sun is powered by streams of electric currents from a filamentary web of gigantic current streams linking all the stars and the galaxy. On this view, Birkeland currents supply huge currents of electric power, and they are surging round the universe in filaments. The filaments that fill the visible universe are so obvious when seen through powerful telescopes, they have led to a widespread acceptance amongst astronomers of the idea that the universe is a cosmic web. The filaments meet and connect at intersection points, which scientists call nodes. In interstellar space, these are stars. In intergalactic space, they are galaxies. But at whatever scale, the pattern of a filamentary web keeps recurring. We can be confident that all dusty complex bodies, such as the Kordelewski clouds, are filled like this with a web of filaments the same as our bodies are too. But to better understand our plasma double, it is worth checking Winston Bostick's experiments with plasmoids. When four plasmoids were fired at each other in his lab, they spun into dramatic spiral shapes. They seemed to him to be behaving as living entities. In other words, he wrote, we appear to be dealing with bodies which have strong powers of self-organization and preservation. So then he thought, as plasmoids bounce off one another, perhaps he can bounce one off a copper plate with no hole. What happened next was really disturbing. The plasmoid passed through the copper plate as if it were not there, a phenomenon that is widely known in relation to plasma and which is also similar to the behavior of UAP phenomenon and spiritual beings, as reported in religious traditions. Frankly, when I started looking at the statistics, trying to make sense, trying to build those databases, do AI on top of it, I was looking for, you know, ET extraterrestrials. Now we've got so much more data that contradicts that. Things coming through the wall of a bedroom. Okay, as a, as a light, and the light turns into something else, and it has information in it, or it, has, or it turns into something physical. You know, this is not, this is way off. I mean, these are not just vehicles that come from somewhere else. And also cases where witnesses were chased by objects with beams, and I was really interested in those beams because those beams were extensible, well, it's, it's hard to make an extensible, if you turn on a light or a laser, you know, it's going to keep going. It doesn't mm -hmm. go 10 feet and just stop in midair. Those beams stop, which means it's not just light, it's something else. And also they, uh, they will pin you to, you know, a hammock, for example, or some of the people who are asleep. In a hammock, they wake up and they see this light, and the light comes down and pins them 
to, to the bed or to the hammock. Plasmoids can also exist within the human body, as was discovered later, because of such things as double-layer sheaths and spiraling filaments inside plasma. So very hot and very cold plasma can exist happily side by side, protected by their surrounding sheaths, which isolate those regions from direct contact with one another absolutely. A plasmoid is a type of plasma, which before Bostic discoveries was suggested as a merely shapeless blob, but in fact is often spherical or has a donut shape. And it also has strange properties. Bostic suggested in his paper that it is quite possible that ionized material ejected from the sun comes to Earth in the form of a plasmoid. Surprisingly, not always as a sphere or in a donut shape. He discovered that plasmoids produced in a good vacuum are in fact elongated cylinders. What is important here is that giant plasmoids from the sun, given the complex behavior that led Bostic to think of them as living entities, and in line with the discovery of the Kordelewski clouds, could be so intricate and complex in their structure that they could even be intelligent or conscious entities. Or could be in effect a controlling program like a computer program that carries information, and in that sense, a communication of intelligence. Such plasmoids could also, in principle, contain information that receptive people could perceive indirectly as inspiration. Bostic reported that plasmoids contain signals which are believed to be associated with the magnetic fields trapped by the plasmoid. He says the structure of these signals is too complex for analysis. If that is the case for tiny plasmoids in a lab, how complex might we expect them to be in a gigantic solar plasmoid striking the Earth's magnetosphere and interacting with it? In his further experiments, Bostic observed that two plasmoids seemed to, quote, seek each other out unerringly. To his astonishment, after the union of the two plasmoids has been accomplished, they combined to a shape resembling the well-known barred spiral galaxies in space. He also wrote that occasionally two plasmoids crashing head-on break into fragments, but even these fragments seem to behave as entities. When four plasmoids were fired at each other, he got the formation looks strikingly like a photograph of a spiral galaxy. He also suggested that plasmoids may be made of self-organizing composed putty, a putty composed of the electromagnetic field and its own gravitational forces working together create the bodies we know as particles. But it doesn't happen all the time, and sometimes, quote, the plasmoids studiously avoid one another. In this instance, instead of mating, two plasmoids sometimes run away from each other. So, just as with humans, not everybody is attracted to everybody else, and there is such a thing as plasmoid rejection. He noticed that, in a way, plasmoids are seeking each other, and once encountered, they decelerate to produce cooperative phenomena, or could deflect to avoid each other. Experiments also showed that plasmoids could turn into standing waves, behaving like the quantum phenomena known as solitons. Important point here is that we have yet another example of the weird phenomena observed in the micro-quantum realm, but occurring in the macro-human world. Solitons can also exist within the human body, a subject discussed in numerous publications by the physicist of the Ukrainian Academy of Sciences, Alexander Davidov. The lessons to be drawn from Bostik's work is that as early as the mid-50s, it was perfectly obvious that separate independent plasma bodies with ordered organization and firm integrity had been created in a lab from plasma. And yet no one dared to imagine that these plasmoids can become even more complex than our physical bodies. So the very similar ideas to the ancient Egyptian man and his double can be found in the concept of bioplasma bodies that suggests that we are jointly constructed of physical bodies and bioplasma bodies, which operate in sync. The further suggestion is that when we die, because our physical body has worn out, our bioplasma body may detach from it, 
We might be said to continue to exist as bioplasmic beings made of non-atomic matter, of plasma. On this way of looking at it, the soul is thus material, but in a different and more rarefied sense than was the physical body. This leads to the concept of bioplasma beings existing without physical bodies, and we suggest that this is what was referred to by Egyptians as the double world. Now we must not forget that plasma is closely tied with electromagnetism, and that the body itself is electromagnetic. The relevance of electricity and magnetism was revealed in 63, when the first scientific detection of a naturally occurring biomagnetic field in the human body proves its existence for the human heart. It was very difficult for scientific and medical experts to accept this discovery at the time, because it went against the body as a machine theory, by which everything was supposed to be chemical and mechanical. And this is the magnetic field around the human head. A separate magnetic field in the brain that is shown is sharply localized in a tiny region of the brain's left hemisphere. This field is an evoked field, created by shooting electric current into a person's finger. These biomagnetic fields are crucial to our bioplasma double, as they continuously interact with our physical bodies through the actions of electricity and magnetism. A lot of research on this matter is still classified, and was conducted at the Naval Agency by Freeman Cope, the agency's special researcher into everything weird. The Office of Naval Research does not exist simply to figure out how to stop ships from sinking. It has a huge remit, which covers almost any scientific subject you can imagine. Many of those are very far out indeed. The Naval Agency must have selected Cope because he had recently discovered strange forms of energy within the body, by suggesting that superconductivity took place among the double helix of the DNA molecule and used organic Josephson junctions. These junctions use the weird quantum tunneling effect for energy flow. Cope came to the conclusion that each of us is surrounded by such invisible clouds. He describes it as a gas of electromagnetic dipoles, he believed this cloud can be detected on rare occasions by sensitive persons, who tend to call it an aura. Cope stressed that he wished to sweep away mystical theories and tackle the matter purely scientifically. He coined a wonderful phrase, magnet auras, to describe the clouds around magnets visible to some people. Cope also suggests that on the planetary scale, these phenomena could create a standing energy grid a vast system of resonant standing waves of Earth energy. He adds as a footnote that this could explain dowsing. If we all have these particles inside us, rendering some people hypersensitive to invisible energy fields. He's saying that these clouds surround each and every one of us, and indeed not just us, but all liquid and solid objects, causing effects that we have not yet even begun to explore or explain. Can this discovery be directly related to the doubles of every object in the double world that was described in ancient Egypt? 